It's been almost half a year since Blue Origin's 23rd suborbital launch experienced an anomaly, and the company has now finally released the results of its investigation. The good news is the escape function worked great, but there was definitely a nozzle problem. This raises the question of what tests did Blue Origin conduct before the NS-23 launch and after it made the cooling system changes? And if it did conduct any tests, were those findings similar to the tests conducted after the NS-23 failure? Let's expose all of it in today's episode of Alpha Tech. Blue Origin announced on March 24th that its investigation into the NS-23 launch concluded that the nozzle in the BE-3PM engine in the rocket's propulsion module suffered a structural failure that caused a thrust misalignment. To better understand this, we must first realize that the New Shepard rocket is one of the small launch vehicles out there as it is powered by a single BE-3 rocket engine that uses hydrogen and oxygen as its fuel and oxidizer. The entire rocket is nearly 60 feet tall or five times smaller than NASA's massive SLS rocket that lifted the Orion spacecraft to an orbit around the moon last year. Blue Origin makes two variants of the engine, one for the New Shepard called the BE-3PM engine and one for the second stage of its new Glenn rocket called the BE-3U engine. The primary difference between these engines is how the fuel and oxidizers are fed into the combustion chamber where they ignite to generate thrust. For the BE-3PM engine, the firm uses the standard pump design that feeds the propellant into the chambers with the pumps powered by a turbine run by a small amount of bleed-off gas from the combustion chamber itself. The BE-3U engine, on the other hand, is an efficient design since most of the bleed-off gas is then fed into the combustion chamber with only some powering the turbines. Blue Origin explained that after the accident, it formed an investigation team that operated with oversight from the Federal Aviation Administration with members from both NASA and the National Transportation Safety Board. This team analyzed video feed from the launch, tests, and the failed rocket recovered from the launch site to determine that a faulty nozzle on the BE-3 engine was responsible for the mission failure. The nozzle on a rocket engine is the bell-shaped outer part that is often the most visually prominent component. Its primary purpose is to channel the thrust into creating lift, and it is typically cooled by super cold propellants flowing through it. For both the BE-3 engines, cold propellants flow through the nozzle, are heated up, and then power the turbines responsible for pumping fuel and oxidizer into the engine. This cooling system was at the heart of the mishap, with Blue Origin revealing that changes made to this led to the nozzle running at a hotter temperature than its materials could tolerate. In fact, as soon as the New Shepard failure took place, Blue Origin tested the BE-3 engine, which led to hot streaks similar to those present on the nozzle debris recovered from the launch site. Blue Origin said that it is making design changes to the combustion chamber of the BE-3PM and its operating parameters. Additionally, unspecified design changes to the nozzle also improved its structural performance. The company said it would resume flights of New Shepard soon, starting with the reflight of the payload-only NS-23 mission. It was not more specific about the schedule and did not state when it would resume crewed flights. In reality, the company had said little about the investigation in the six months since the mishap. We will get to the bottom of it. I can't talk about specific timelines or plans for when we will resolve that situation other than to say that we fully intend to be back in business as soon as we are ready, said Gary Lai, chief architect of New Shepard at Blue Origin during a talk at a suborbital research conference back on the 28th of February. We are still closing out the investigation. We're working very closely with the FAA, said Ariane Cornell, vice president of commercial orbital astronaut and international sales at Blue Origin during a panel at the Satellite 2023 conference on March 15th. We're going into very deep, deep detail on that. She said that the company was planning to return New Shepard to flight by the end of this year, but was not more specific. She noted that the escape system on the vehicle worked perfectly on NS-23, a point that the company emphasized in its statement about the investigation, which reads as follows. The crew capsule escape system worked as designed, bringing the capsule and its payloads to a safe landing at launch site 1 with no damage. Cornell noted that the company had not lost any customers for its crewed flights since the mishap. 
Demand continues to be strong, she said. We continue to have customers signing up for the New Shepard. Some of those even asked us to fly an es escape mission because it seemed so exciting. We have politely declined. <laughs> to be honest, we hope that the New Shepard will fly soon as this is Jeff Bezos' only consolation. His orbital rocket is far from being flight-ready, and Bezos is running out of time to save Blue Origin. Bezos has a compelling vision for space, and it is entirely genuine. From way back before his Amazon days, Bezos has been a true believer in the power of using space to improve life on Earth. Our planet, he says, is a garden to be preserved. This is the only good planet in the solar system. We've sent robotic probes to all of them, and this is the only good one. We have to take care of it, and when you go to space and see how fragile Earth is, you'll want to take care of it even more. To accomplish this, Bezos founded Blue Origin in 2000 to build a road to space. This simply means bringing down the cost of launching rockets by reusing them over and over again. By lowering the cost of reaching space, Bezos seeks to move heavy industry off Earth. Instead of strip mining our planet, he says, we should glean those resources from lifeless asteroids. Our insatiable energy needs, too, might be met by space-based solar power farms. And finally, expanding into space will allow humanity to grow as a species, eventually populating orbital settlements near Earth and then other worlds. This unlimited opportunity for expansion would save humans from entering a stasis and from fighting for increasingly scarce resources on Earth. Bezos is theoretically right about all of this, as today, roughly half of the world's population lacks access to reliable electricity and reasonably high living conditions. The only long-term means to bring this half of the world's population up to a standard of living enjoyed by the developed world without destroying the Earth is probably accessing the bounty of resources in space. Building such a space economy and a spacefaring civilization will not happen overnight, though, and that's why Bezos views Blue Origin as a multi-generational effort. Big things start small, and this is how it starts, he said. The company has a plan. It started small with the New Shepard system and learned how to reuse rockets. It's currently developing the much larger New Glenn rocket, which will essentially use the New Shepard design as its second stage. There are plans for even bigger rockets down the line, all to move more mass to and from planet Earth much more cheaply. Yet, this plan has unfolded very slowly, and Bezos has not pushed forward with the same determination displayed by his leadership of Amazon. Blue Origin remains very far from self-sufficiency. Bezos still must pump more than $1 billion into Blue Origin annually to keep the lights on. Even for one of the world's richest people, this kind of financial backing does not seem sustainable. That's just about it for today's episode. Please don't forget to share your ideas in the comment section down below, because everyone's support motivates us to create more quality videos like this. And for that, we thank you so much, and we hope to see you again next time.